While it's thrilling to watch Captain America take out goons with his shield, to see Thor blast his foes with lightning bolts, and to watch Iron Man shoot baddies with his energy blast, and watch Hulk walk around entirely in the nude, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a lot more than just surface level spectacle. Sure, all the action and eye-popping effects help to make these movies successful global blockbusters, but for the fans who like to spend time with their movies long after the thrill of the action has worn off, the MCU is the gift that keeps on giving. While there are lots of obvious easter eggs and cameos peppered throughout all the films, the really satisfying stuff is found under the surface. The details that are impossible to notice without freeze framing every shot, googling like a madman, or watching each movie a dozen times over in slow motion. And we did all those things so you don't have to. So with that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, back from the hospital after accidentally spilling Simon Miller's pint to bring you 10 amazing details you probably missed in MCU movies. Number 10, Bruce Banner's Wish, The Avengers. Bruce Banner is one of the most relatable characters in the MCU. He just wants to live a normal, stress-free life, free from the burden of his angry green alter ego and all the death and destruction that that causes. This desire to live normally has been hinted at several times, most notably through his relationships with Natasha Romanoff and Betty Ross, but an even subtler nod came in the character's first appearance in 2012's The Avengers. While Banner and Romanoff are talking about bringing Banner in to work with S.H.I.E.L.D., Romanoff tells him that he's gone a year without an incident, i.e. hulking out, and that he doesn't want to break that streak. In response, Banner states, well, I don't every time get what I want, while simultaneously rocking a cradle. Banner's condition means he can't have a kid, let alone raise one, which is actually really sad. This also goes to show just how complex Mark Ruffalo's portrayal of the character really is. Number 9, Bucky's Container, Captain America Civil War. With such a rabid, passionate fanbase consisting of millions and millions of people, giving them sly winks like the following one is now par for the course in each movie. In Captain America Civil War, Bucky Barnes is taken prisoner by Martin Freeman's Everett Ross. During his imprisonment, he's locked in a large glass container, which is labelled Deck 23 or D23. D23 is also the name of the official Disney fan club, which is known for its conference, the D23 Expo. The D in D23 obviously stands for Disney, while 23 is a reference to the year 1923, during which Walt Disney founded the company. Number 8, The Asgardian Sword Draw, Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok contained a little bit of a twist when it revealed that Kate Blanchett's evil Hela, the goddess of death, was actually Thor and Loki's long lost sister. Talk about family troubles. During the film, Thor, Loki and Hela can all be seen drawing bladed weapons, and when they do, they all draw them in the same way, leading to the same pose. The blades are pulled out and pointed to the sides, aiming slightly towards the floor. It seems like this trio has more in common than even they think. Number 7, Stark's Sonic Weapons, The Incredible Hulk. The Incredible Hulk is often regarded as the black sheep of the MCU family, and it's easy to see why. Betty Ross hasn't been mentioned since, Edward Norton was replaced with Mark Ruffalo, and it contains very few links to any of the subsequent movies. That being said, it does contain more links than you might have realised. During the opening credits, a quick shot of some of Stark Industries tech can be seen, armoured cars with sonic weapons mounted on top. These cars can be seen in action later in the film when General Ross attempts to subdue Hulk on the university campus. However, it's not clear that this is Stark tech unless you see that shot in the opening credits, but when you have this information, a later appearance by similar sonic weapons start to make a lot more sense. In Captain America Civil War's airport battle, War Machine subdues Scarlet Witch by blasting her with a miniaturized version of the same Stark weaponry that was mounted on those cars. It's just a little nod that the big wig of Marvel haven't forgotten about the Incredible Hulk after all. Number 6, The Other Korg, Thor, The Dark World. Taika Waititi's Korg was one of the best parts of Thor Ragnarok, maybe even its best. His dry humour, deadpan delivery and wonderful character design instantly made him one of the MCU's most interesting side characters, and it would be a massive shame if we didn't see more of him in the future. And while you might have assumed that Ragnarok was the first time we'd ever seen Korg on screen, this assumption would be false. He's actually popped up in the MCU before, albeit in a radical 
radically different interpretation of the character. In the Vanaheim battle scene in Thor The Dark World, Thor comes face to face with a giant rock-like monster, who's destroyed by the God of Thunder after a single blow from his hammer. And the DVD commentary for the movie revealed that this actually was Korg, but because he was never explicitly referred to that by name in the film, Watiti was able to retcon this appearance out of existence and deliver his own version of the character in Ragnarok, thankfully. Number 5. Pepper's Necklace – Iron Man 3 By the end of Iron Man 3, Tony Stark was a changed man. He underwent surgery to extract the deadly pieces of shrapnel from his body, he eliminated his over-reliance on the Iron Man suits by destroying most of them, and he committed himself to becoming a better partner for Pepper. Now ain't that sweet. Pepper had a rough time during Iron Man 3, what with her being abducted by Killian and frustrated with Tony's suits impacting their day-to-day -day life. She needed a bit more stability so in an attempt to show her just how much he'd changed, Tony fully devoted himself to his red-headed girlfriend by giving her a deep red, heart-shaped necklace. But this was no ordinary necklace. Look closely and you'll see that the chain is made from interlinked pieces from the shrapnel that was extracted from Tony's chest during surgery. Nothing says I love you quite like the pieces of metal that almost killed you several years ago. Classy move, Mr. Stark. Number 4. The Paprikas Recipe – Captain America Civil War when you're watching a movie and a quick shot of a newspaper pops up, nine times out of ten, the entirety of that paper is comprised of repeated blocks of text, or text that makes no sense at all. These details don't really matter, but it can take you out of the movie if you spot one of them, and it's refreshing when you learn that the filmmakers went the extra mile to make every tiny part of a scene look authentic. This definitely applies to Captain America Civil War's kitchen scene, which finds Vision attempting to cook a tasty chicken meal. The shot of the recipe he's using could have been hastily typed up and thrown together without it making any sense. It's on screen for mere seconds after all. But the chicken paprika she's attempting to whip up is actually a printout of a real life recipe, which you can actually make in real life yourself. This just makes me want a Cooking with Vision MCU one shot even more than I already did. Number 3. Romanoff reacts to Stark v Rhodey – Iron Man 2 Before Iron Man 2 came out, the fact that Scarlett Johansson was playing Natasha Romanoff slash Black Widow was common knowledge, but to the characters in the film, she was just Natalie Rushman, Tony Stark's new assistant. So even though we knew her true identity, the filmmakers still had to inject subtle nods and clues into the story, quick moments that would briefly break Rushman's cover and reveal the Black Widow underneath. And this is one such blink and you'll miss it moment. Moment. During the fight scene between Tony and Rhodey that takes place shortly after the house party in Malibu, Pepper starts to blame Natalie for Tony's erratic behaviour as of late, but she's interrupted when Tony and Rhodey, both in Iron Man armour, crash through the floor. Pepper, who isn't a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter or undercover assassin, flails around wildly in response, but Natalie, who is, instinctively strikes a combat-ready pose in order to repel any immediate danger. Of course, there is no immediate danger, but the assassin within Natalie just couldn't help but be alert and ready for a rumble. Number 2. Conversation Transcripts – Iron Man in many Tony Stark scenes throughout the MCU, the character converses with Jarvis, his very intelligent system interface. It's an odd connection, but a convincing one with Jarvis assisting Tony with tasks he wouldn't otherwise be able to complete. The next time you're watching a scene that features the two characters talking, keep an eye out for any computer monitors that may be present in the room. Why? There's a good chance that the same conversation the two characters are having is being transcribed on a screen in the background. There are loads of these across the films. Keep your eyes peeled next time you do a rewatch. Number 1. The Dancing Monkey – Captain America The First Avenger Steve Rogers has been on one hell of a journey. From fighting in World War II to assisting the Avengers in modern day, he's changed more than any other character in the MCU. But no matter what, he cannot let go of his past life. From his undying commitment to Bucky to his love for Peggy Carter, modern day Steve is haunted by his World War II days, and this is evidenced by a small detail in Captain America Civil War that further ties into Steve's past and links back to his time 
time fighting for the US Army. Let's rewind to Captain America the First Avenger. After becoming a super soldier, Steve is forced to don a colourful outfit and travel the nation performing shows, an attempt to raise American morale and convince more people to join the war effort. After he's booed off the stage at one of these shows, he sits on some steps and draws a picture of a monkey wearing a Captain America suit. This is what he feels like when he's parading about on stage, a monkey being forced to entertain. And quite brilliantly, this monkey makes a return in Civil War, sitting on Steve's desk in a quick shot near the start of the film. More than just a throwaway Easter egg, this drawing is significant here because, again, Steve will soon feel like an object being forcefully wielded by someone else when he's asked to sign the Sokovia Records. It's little details like this that really tie the MCU together, make it special, and one of the great cinematic events of all time. And there you have it folks, don't forget to leave a comment down below with your own personal favourite hidden detail, as well as leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Also feel free to subscribe and visit whatculture.com for daily news, lists and articles and all that other good stuff. I'm Will for What Culture. thanks for hanging out and I'll see you next time.